Hi everyone, welcome, it's Martin. Um, in a previous video we explained what Workspace ONE Intelligence is and in this video we'll dive deeper and we'll explain some use cases. So, Workspace ONE. Int. And then, use cases. With me, I have a very special guest, Frederick. He's from Bremer, Belgium. Um, Frederick, can you tell us something about, uh, for example, user experience? Yeah, okay. So. We have different kind of use cases indeed, uh, and one of the use cases is mainly focused on user experience. And it's a really nice one, it talks about user experience, but then again for uh, improving that part, it's battery health. Bad health, not bad health, but battery health. So if we look at battery health, uh, what happens traditionally is what um, if a user is experienced battery health issues, uh, you will see that after three, four years, his laptop doesn't charge anymore, and after 20 minutes, a half an hour, he has he, he needs to put in a cable to make sure that he can do his job. Yeah. So we'll change that around and we'll do that proactively. So the first thing that we will do is monitoring, start monitoring all of those devices uh, to check battery health. So we'll start and say, hey, uh, what is the battery health of your uh, device and give me that status and it will do that continuously. Second part is, okay, we have a list so let's start tagging what kind of devices do have or prone to have a bad battery in a certain amount of time or they already notice that it doesn't charge well anymore. Okay. So we will start tagging those devices to identify what kind of devices do have a, ba a bad battery. And the second part, and that what we do there is automated reporting. So when it gets a tag, it will be joined in that report. Oh, yeah, yeah, and we can see it in the dashboard again as well. Again, you can create a dashboard and see, hey, uh, give me a dashboard of all the bad uh, battery health laptops. Okay, great. So when you have that uh, report, and it's an automated report, you can create an, an action on that part. So what we will do is recreate an action and we will create, for example, service desk ticket. Uh, we have an out of the box integration with uh, ServiceNow, for example, what you can do with any uh, third party integration. If it supports APIs, you can uh, shoot a call and say, hey, um, add a ticket for me. And that ticket is, for example, order a new battery. And then the last part is, okay, uh, you order a new battery, but user experience, everything is always about communication. Yeah. So notify that user and say, hey, we order a new battery, do it via email, via Slack, and we will send it to you in two, three weeks. And instead, if you think back at the beginning, uh, instead of that user that needs to work four years and says, hey, my laptop, my battery is broken, uh, I want a new one, and he needs to wait four or five weeks, now we will do that proactively and send the battery to that user before it gets Bad. You can bet bad or before the end user experience that degrades. Yeah, indeed. Okay. So great. we have user experience, but yeah. maybe you can tell something about security. Yeah. Let's talk about security. So what do we have for, from a security point of view? Well, there's a lot of data we can uh, digest from our, all our Windows endpoints mm -hmm. and what's uh, a big hassle or what's hard to, uh, to manage. Um, there are Windows updates. So, first part, what can we do? We can create a dashboard from, uh, from all our Windows devices. So let's quickly draw a dashboard. So then we can have a look. Uh, we can uh, have a look at all of our uh, Windows machines. What updates are installed? What updates yeah. are they missing? And then we we can all view that from a report, and maybe we can um, review that in a dashboard. Mm. Well, the second step we can do, then if we have all the data, then we can identify uh, the risk. So risk. How do you do that uh, on that part? For example, um, for me, I'm, um, I'm currently in Belgium. Um, it can, can be based on location. Um, what kind of bit we do in OS 10? Every six months we have a big update, so we yeah. can have different versions of Windows updates. For example, 1803, 
1809. So all that will be clearly uh, shown in the dashboard and we, have, we know, okay, which devices which update and then we can... Uh, so we will start segmenting that, that, uh, that, that, that data that you receive. Yeah, we, we will send them, uh, segment it then and we will view it for each device and we can segment it further on location and okay. all the parameters we want as well. Perfect. As soon as we have that information, okay, then what can we do? Then the same as you, we can create an action. An action. Mm. So then we can, uh, for example, we can uh, send an email to the user mm. and say for, okay, your device is not compliant, um, you need to install that patch and, yeah. and they, 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 instead of ignoring the update, you need to install it now because it's a critical update yeah. for a security patch. Um, then, what, uh, then we can do an action. So uh, like I just said, uh, push, down the, uh, push down the update, get yeah. the device corrected again. Then a uh, fourth step is okay, we, we, did, we did the action, we notified the user. Okay, but what do we have to do then? Yeah, we have to follow up, of course. Yeah. It has the update been installed? So with fourth action, then we will, have to, uh, then we will monitor. Yeah. And again, then with compliance, I think you can check and say- Yes, hey, when, when it's compliant again, then we can auto autocorrect it. Or if it doesn't, and after a certain time, it's, the device is not yet up to date, then we can do another action and we can say, okay, now yeah. you're cut off the, the, uh, the, uh, the enterprise resources because you're not compliant. Yeah, okay, perfect. Are there any other use cases you can think of? Well, uh, I always think about uh, the IT or in himself uh, and, uh, and IT operations, of course. Uh, and I. IT operations, you start talking about uh, the compliance part. Well, I'll, I'll talk yes. a bit about uh, compliance. Okay. Um, because we have a lot of devices, not only Windows 10 and so on, but uh, you want to start seeing what devices are compliant or what devices are not compliant just mm -hmm. to measure risks. So what we'll do is check and say, hey, uh, we'll do a sort of query on all of those devices and check what kind of issues, what kind of uh, settings do you not have or do you have before uh, creating a nice report or a nice dashboard again. Okay. Again, it's all about risk and again it's a little bit around the Windows updates but you will start segmenting your data in different categories because you have data and you say for example my users in, in a certain location do not need that patch because we have different measures in place and we do not need that patch there. Or, uh, for example, operating system versions or uh, the user himself. Maybe it's a different user on a different device and those kind of things. So we can segment that data and uh, make sure that it is correctly assigned. Again, you could use tagging and reporting to make it automated. And can we also query stuff like uh, firewall, is it on, antivirus, yeah. stuff like that? These are the things that we can pull down and say, hey, these are the settings that you need to configure and make sure that it's compliant in my whole. Okay, nice. Uh, so we have query, we have, we have the segmentation. At that end, you want to make sure that the, a certain action happens. So again, we create an action and we say, hey, um, if you're in that location, you need that patch or you need that setting, so we'll do an automated action and say we'll make sure that that action happens before a user gets access again to his applications, to his SaaS environment. Or he can only access VDI and published applications because that's in the data center and that's secured. Okay. But all the other applications he cannot access anymore. So we'll automate that and we'll push down the settings that are needed. And last action that we will do is of course we will notify that user and say, hey, uh, we are doing an automated action. Uh, you can stall it again, like in a Windows update, hey, wait a bit, a little bit. Mm -hmm. The first reaction could be, and it's an escalated step pro progress, you could say, hey, the first time that you do not install it perfect, you can still access everything, but after a week we will re-notify you and say, hey, you didn't install it a bit last week, now we will block you before you uh, and after you install the update, we will allow you access again. Yeah. So notify that end user to make sure that everything is compliant at the end. So you can integrate actions. So for example, you just said, okay, let's notify the user. If it's not done by a certain time, you can send another email and take yeah. a certain action. Okay. Indeed. And the cool thing about this is it's, it's quite open. So 
use your imagination. The sky is the limit. So these are three use cases, but you can think of a lot of use cases of your own and say, hey, uh, I want this, I want workflows, I want notifications, I want uh, tagging, reporting, dashboarding, those kind of things. Combine it and make it a strong tool that you can use in your organization. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Frederick, to, for uh, joining me and explaining these different use cases. You, thank you for watching and hope you to see you next time.